All right. So for the camera, convex lens, focal length of 50 centimeters, the object is 60 centimeters away. Basically, tell us about the image. So how do we go about finding actually exact information about the image other than a really bad drawing? Find some hypotenuse lengths and you are doing it the long way. Yes, you could go through that way. Uh, let's see if we can narrow that down a little bit. Um, there's a use formula. the lens maker's formula. That the lens maker formula would help you find this number right here, but I'm giving that one to oh, you. Okay. We'll save that one for the test. Do we do what we, yeah. we just did, did for the quiz, where it's just uh, do like times? Uh, well, there's no is there, right? Yeah, times the um, focal point over do minus the focal point. Yeah, it's the exact same equation. The, the interpretation is a little bit different, but the equation is identical. Uh, I'm going to do it in one over do plus one over di. Is one over f. Uh, what Christian said works also. That's if you want to just jump straight to the next bit. What is the distance of the object? 60 centimeters. So 1 over 60 plus 1 over distance of the image. And the focal length? 50. So we end up with 1 over di is 1 50th minus 1 60th. And so uh, I guess 300 is the common denominator. So this becomes 6 over 300 minus 5 over 300, which is 1 over 300. Is this correct? Christian, did you just do it the way that you had said? No, you did it that way? Yeah. So we did it the we did it Christian's way. It would be D O F over D O minus F, which is fifty times sixty over sixty minus fifty. So it's in the exact same order. Which is 3,000 divided by 10, which is 300. Is this correct? I feel like it's a trick question, but I'm going to say yes. Yeah, I'm going to say yes. All right, feeling good. All right, so, yeah, there's somewhat of a trick question in there. Uh, why would I take off points for that answer? You don't have your units. There we go. All right. The math, math is spot on, so in that respect, yes, you're right. Okay. So don't forget units in the end. Uh, the magnification, how would you find magnification? <clears throat> oh, isn't it the height of the image from the height of the object? Except we don't know the height of the image. The distance of the image over? Pardon? Distance of the image over distance yeah. of the object. Um, the other way, the other way. No, 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 that part's right. Negative. Negative. Yes. Negative. Don't forget the negative sign. D image over D object, which is negative 300 over 60 or negative 5. And what are the appropriate units here? There aren't any. All right, there are none. Uh, what does the negative sign indicate? It's flipped. Okay. The image is reversed or not? Uh, inverted is the official inverted. term, but yeah, yeah. flipped. And is this a real or virtual image? What is the difference? Because the two people said virtual, but did it with a question mark there. <laughs> well, I just remember if it's negative, it be yeah. virtual. If it's what's awesome. negative? If the magnification's negative? If something is negative. Yeah, what, what negative would make it virtual? Well, it's the magnification. No, not. Negative magnification tells, says it's inverted. Oh. 
Yeah, that. If that's negative, it's virtual. So what exactly is a virtual, besides the, the negative sign indication there, what is a virtual image or a real image? Isn't a virtual image where it looks like it's behind the mirror? Like if you're looking at it, it looks like you're looking through a window kind of. Okay, and in this case, it's a lens instead of a mirror. Hmm. Wouldn't the same hold true? Except for it be upside down? No, same does not hold. There is, some, there is something common between the two, but that's not a common thing. Because if this were a virtual image, the image would actually be on this side of the list. So for a mirror, what Curtis said, if for a mirror, a virtual image would be over here. So if this is a mirror, this is virtual. And real images would be over here. For a lens, assuming object is here, an object is there. Uh, the, this is, the real images are over here. And the virtual images are over here. What is the common thread between virtual and real? The distance? Would it be the distance of the image? Right, in both cases. Uh, or the distance of the object? Well, in, I'm suddenly thinking of all the exceptions. Um, under all the problems we have done so far, uh, the distance of the image is positive in all the real cases and negative in the virtual cases. Let's say unreal in the virtual. What does virtual mean anyway? Not real. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, so, so better, but yeah, I guess that's it. it. It seems like it's real. Yeah. All right, so. If I have light coming in, so I have light hitting the head of this, this object here, it hits the mirror, what's the light gonna do? That way. Okay, I was looking for something more general than that. <laughs> when the light hits a mirror, what does it do? Reflect. Okay, and when it goes through a lens? Refract. Yeah, okay. So light coming in here is gonna go through, light coming in here is gonna bounce off in some direction. So what's the common thread between real images? The light? Keep going. The beams. Pardon? The light beams. Or it, yeah. They, they meet at a focal point? Uh, not a, focal point's not the right word. Just drop at a focal point, say it again. They mean. They mean. Yeah, they mean. <laughs> in a real image, the light rays actually meet at where the image is. In a virtual image, the light rays only appear to meet at where the image is. So on something like this, you have a real image over here on a mirror because the light rays are actually going to you know, meet at a specific spot. Whereas a virtual image, so that's my focal point, the image is say here. Uh, for a virtual image, we have light ray coming in here, and it's going to, it comes in here, it's going to bounce off like that. Light ray coming in here is going to bounce off like that. So we have light bouncing off and it's spreading apart here. So they would actually be over here. The light rays don't actually meet here, it just appears to meet there. When you look into a mirror, you are seeing a virtual image of yourself. Because the light rays aren't actually meeting there, it just looks like there's an image of you on the other side of the mirror. All right, questions before I'm going to actually try to do this with a meter stick. To see how good we get. I've tried this before. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Does that look relevant? 
relatively parallel to the top and bottom? No. Mm -hmm. What do I need to do? Lift the right and higher. Oh, too high. There you go. Yep. That's good. It's coordination issue. to extend the lines. Uh, those are marked off in even increments, so let's make this the equivalent of 20 centimeters from there to there. So if I put the mirror here, or sorry, the lens there, I need something that's perpendicular to the line, so are those, are those perpendicular? still somewhat perpendicular? I'd say so. All right, so this is my lens. The focal point is at 50 centimeters away, so that puts it halfway between these two. That puts the focal point here. My image is here. Uh, I didn't actually give a size of the image, so I, I said it verbally. So height the uh, of object is, I think I said three centimeters. So I want to make this perpendicular to the line there. That are those parallel? Which way? And I will make this actually. The scale. So that's about three centimeters right there. So much easier on paper. All right. So there's got to be a focal point over here also. The focal point over here is about there. All right. So light that's coming in parallel should go through the focal point. Is this parallel to this line right here? It's going to hit the lens, and then it's going to go through here. Right. Uh, light that goes through the center should go through the center. Light that hits the center should keep going through. Notice that these two lines seem to be getting closer to each other, barely. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need to extend this. Probably a bad one to do for this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
We should actually meet somewhere over here. Let's do one more just to see. What the heck? And for a penny and for a pound. <laughs> It's like it's getting there. Yeah, it's getting there. Might need another whiteboard, but it'll get yeah. there. <laughs> up right where you the line gets thick here yeah all right you know what instead of uh, you know at some point I want to do one of those correctly so let's do different numbers here so we can actually somewhere be somewhere in the range that I need uh, so contact lens so let's put the objects farther away at That should be within the realm of what I need. All right, so make it 90 centimeters away. Where Where is the image? And I'm gonna make this bigger. So distance of image is, you should be able to, while I'm drawing something up here, you guys can calculate that. No, because the image, because regardless of the height of the object, the image was still going to be 300 centimeters away. Oh, oh now I'm going to run into a different problem. Oh, it's at 90 now. So I'm going to change my scale. So this is now 30 centimeters. And so 50 would be 2 thirds away. goes through the focal point. Do you have magnets? You could just 
Mm -hmm. Then kind of place it on top. I do. Goodbye. That's crazy enough to work. <laughs> just, it's just crazy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that. Yeah. That's big brain, Chris. I got, I got something in my head. <laughs> I know that's uh, not necessarily parallel to the line I just drew, but is that parallel to the board? Yeah. <laughs> you need stronger magnets. <laughs> I do. Perfect. <laughs> Now you put two magnets on one side and use your hand on the other side. I, I'm not convinced that's going to do any better. <laughs> Alright, and then that which goes to the center should just go to the center. So let's do it so it actually crosses the line there. And then that which comes in parallel here. Try it yet again. That does not seem right. So that which comes in parallel should then go through the focal point. Man, a little way far off. <laughs> oh, there's the problem. My focal point is not there anymore. I've changed my scale. There we go. And there's a certain bit of, of a cheat here, but. All right, we're gonna call that one a victory. So our image, the distance is, well, we have our scale there. The distance is, 38.6 centimeters, so let's see how close we get, 38.6 centimeters on the board distance, but our scale is 30 centimeters, uh, a board, I'll put a CM sub B for centimeter board, is equal to 10 centimeters of real life. This is a real life distance, and so I need to convert into the sort of the board or the answer to see how close we get. So this is times 30 centimeters over, oh, actually, that, was, that should be, that's the board distance, that's the real distance, 10 centimeters of board distance. Ten centimeters, so 10 centimeters on the board represents 30 centimeters of real life, there we go. So 38.6 times basically three. Versus 112.5. Not too bad considering all the issues that I have. Going back to childhood.
<laughs> All right, just a simple little lens problem. We're gonna do another simple lens problem and then we're gonna combine them. I'm not gonna draw it out. You're welcome. All right, concave lens. Focal length is, we'll make it negative 30 centimeters. Object, 90 centimeters away. What can you tell me about the image? It's one of those two. <laughs> Diverging lenses usually produce virtual. Like concave or is that the thing? Concave is diverging. What do you got? Anything about the image? Besides the fact that we sort of established it's uh, probably a virtual image. 45 centimeters. 45 centimeters? So you did what? How'd you get that? Uh, well, first I did. Well, I, I didn't do 30 actually, so it might be negative 45. But it was. So what did you do? 1 over the focal length minus 1 over uh, distance of the object. One over distance to the image. All right, so one over negative 30 minus one over 90 is equal to one over d sub i. So that would be uh, negative three ninetieths minus one ninetieth is negative four ninetieths. So d sub i would be negative 90 over 4. I'll get negative 22.5. Dang, that's right. There I should have said that. I had it. I should have said Believe in yourself. And even if you're wrong, say it with confidence. So if I crudely sketch, we have a diverging lens here. I have an object, so the object is 30 centimeters away from the focal point. So one, two, three. So my object is here. Object light that comes in parallel should go away from our focal point. Light that comes in uh, through the focal point should then uh, oh, sorry, I've already dealt with that focal point. Like that's heading towards the other focal point on the other side should then go parallel. And like that goes through the center should just go through the center still. You'll see we have these three lines that it's diverging lens, they're spreading apart from each other, and you can sort of trace backwards where they meet. And roughly in the same general area, uh, obviously a very crude drawing. My image based on the crude drawing is smaller than the object, and that seems to match our magnification. The magnification would be negative, tw negative of a negative 22.5 over 90, which is one fourth. So our image should be a quarter of the size of the, the original. All right, questions to you. So if those are glasses, would those be for far-sighted people? Uh, -sighted. Concave lenses, you want diverging for nearsighted people. Because nearsighted, the image naturally falls in front of the retina, and you want to push it, you want the person even farther okay. back. Can you explain the diverging lenses again? I'm not really sure what, what that is. What's the difference between that and a regular lens? 
Uh, the magnifying glass I always think of as the regular lens. Okay. Uh, that's a converging lens because the light comes in and then focuses on a, on a single point. That's okay. burning stuff. And diverging lens is like that, where they come out. Yeah, light comes Split. in and then should spread apart. Okay. That answers my question. Okay. It ultimately goes back to chapter 35 for refraction about when it hits it, it will dim and then it will bend again and okay. takes it the other way. No other questions at the moment? All right, so the lens combination, that's where we're heading. So instead of having a single lens, let's have two lenses. So I've got the setup right here. I have, uh, this is my focal length of 50 centimeters. And then over here, I'll have a negative 30, focal length of negative 30 centimeters. I don't have to tell you whether it's converging or diverging. This is a converging lens. It is convex lens. This is the classic magnifying glass type thing. This is a diverging or concave lens. So if I drew it more appropriately, sort of the extremes of the two. Now I can create a negative focal length where, I mean, they don't both have to be concave, but this is the, the classic example. We can use the lens maker's formula to figure out some bizarre combination that will also get you the same effect. But I could potentially do a, something like that. Yeah. I need to tell you one other piece of information here. Uh, we're going to keep the 90 centimeters. distance between these lenses will make 200 centimeters apart. The question is, where is the ultimate? Where is the image and what is the magnification of the image? And so what can we find out about the image? All right, so when dealing with a double system like this, you do one lens at a time. So the image of the first lens is the object of the second lens. So we've already gone through this right here. I know that the distance to the image for the first lens, so if I have an object that's over here at 90 centimeters away, obviously not the scale. The distance to the image was 112.5 centimeters. That's my recollection. Okay. Which puts